Quit picking fights and go make something. This is a quote from one of my favorite books called Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. And I think this quote is particularly relevant pertaining to the current discussion going on around AI art. In my opinion, most artists are currently more concerned with fighting uphill battles rather than learning and embracing the technology itself. And if you spend all your time as an artist arguing rather than creating, what does that make you? Complain about how others make software by making software. Andre Torres. While others complain, I've been busy creating and learning about these amazing new tools that we all now have at our fingertips. I think artists just need to take a step back and realize just how far this technology has come in such a short amount of time. I mean, just four years ago, this is what AI art looked like. But with its rapid development has also come a sea of strong opinions and heated debate. In reality, we're all just trying to navigate this newfound technology together. And in a couple months from now, with how fast the technology is progressing, the arguments of today may not even be relevant. So I'd rather focus my attention on learning and adapting rather than debating. Soon, these AI image generators could reach a plateau for the imagination they can have, because they'll start to be limited by the initial data sets that they were trained on. In the very near future, it's possible that we see entirely new data sets arise from say five images that an artist volunteers for the sake of pushing AI forward. And AI could spin off an infinite number of unique new images just from those five images. And this whole debate around how AI art only works off of stolen artists' previous work may not even be in the discussion or be a debate. That argument in six months from now might be completely obsolete. We just don't know for sure with how fast the technology is progressing. It could literally go anywhere. This, of course, is just an example, and I'm not a computer scientist or an expert on AI by any means. But you get where I'm going with this and how things could potentially evolve really quickly from here. And wouldn't you have rather focused your time and energy on learning how this technology all works and figuring out how to best leverage AI within your creative practice rather than arguing about it with others online around topics that might not even be relevant in a year. AI ethics and the discussions around it is a real topic and they're important to have. But this first wave of this technology would not have become so accessible if it weren't for these initial models being trained on images scraped from the internet. Does that make this right? Probably not. But the way I see it is that it's a marker in AI's creative development and was a necessary step towards getting AI in the hands of the general public at a free or low cost. When I was in my second year at UCLA studying design, I had the privilege to take a motion graphics course under leading AI artist Rafik Anadol. If you don't know who that is, I highly recommend you look up his work online. The work him and his studio were producing that incorporated machine learning and AI was amazing. I'd never seen anything like it in my entire life. It was truly mind-blowing to me. And after learning from him firsthand and witnessing the projects that he was working on at the time, I knew that AI combined with creativity was eventually going to lead to a creative renaissance. That renaissance is coming at a far more rapid pace than I could have ever predicted. I could only dream of creating the art that Rafik was creating. At the time, there was still such a technical barrier to entry to incorporate AI in your creative work. Even just three short years ago, the term AI artist was reserved for people like Rafik, who had the resources, the technical expertise, the computing power, the money, the team, to be able to produce amazing projects that leveraged AI. Rafik is an artist who fully embraces AI and machine within his artwork. And I've always been super inspired by this forward-thinking philosophy of his. I use data as a pigment and paint with a thinking brush that is assisted by artificial intelligence. We're seeing a renaissance unfold right in front of our eyes. In my opinion, it's an incredible time to be alive as a creative person. But unfortunately, the current narrative around AI art seems to be a death to the artist sort of mentality. And in my opinion, it's sort of a backwards way of thinking about it. Sure, the role of an artist might change, but AI will only kill you if you let it. The creatives who learn to embrace this change and adapt with it will ultimately come out on top. As I like to say, AI will separate the amateurs from the professionals. When programs like DALI 2 began surfacing last year, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought to myself, 
finally, a way that I could experiment with AI from someone who doesn't necessarily come from a technical coding background. I was experimenting with some Google Colabs and notebooks, but they were all still a little clunky and were definitely not as polished as the current state of these AI generators. The fact that it's so easy to use now that we can just type a couple words and magically we get AI images is really insane. I immediately viewed this as a positive. I just couldn't believe how accessible this tech was already becoming. And I knew this was the start of something amazing. I knew there was no going back and my mentality as a creative was immediately that I should embrace this wave or I was gonna be left in the dust. I immediately became obsessed with generating images, particularly with Midjourney. And I started thinking deeply about what this all meant for me as an artist and as someone who makes a living off their own creativity. But I think my initial reaction was a lot different than that of most artists. I think many artists and creative people immediately thought that this was the end of their career. And because of this potential threat, immediately shifted towards a more negative mindset towards the technology. Finding ways to bash it rather than embrace it. My reaction was a positive one because I had this firsthand experience of seeing Rafiq leverage this amazing technology to create revolutionary work. I was just excited by what this meant for the future of how I create. I thought, how can I best leverage this amazingly accessible technology within my own creative practice. And I'm still actively searching for the answer to that question. But one way I've found is using these AI generated images within my physical collage art. I recently created a video about that process and I'd love for you to check it out if you care to watch. A lot of the arguments going around that are against AI art and the ethical concerns that they bring up are valid and they're arguments worth having. And it was inevitable that they'd arise. But for me personally, I sort of gave into the fact that AI is here to stay and it's not going anywhere and we might as well embrace it. I'll end this video with this. As humans, we ultimately always end up adapting to new technology. But there's always this era in the beginning of new technology where there is a major pushback. And that pushback is natural. As humans, we have this innate response to anything new to be skeptical of it. Our natural tendency is to resist things. But we have to fight that resistance because what's on the other side is usually beneficial for us. As Stephen Pressfield says in The War of Art, the more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we'll feel towards pursuing it. The invention of AI could be one of the greatest technological advancements of our society ever. And I just think it's important that we remain open-minded about things. When the camera was invented, there was a pushback because the artists who traditionally had to hand draw or paint a landscape or portrait thought that they were gonna lose their jobs. But artists adapted, found new jobs, and now everyone thinks that they're a photographer thanks to the iPhone. When the internet was invented, most people called it a fad. Now, the internet has revolutionized how we connect and live on a day-to-day -day basis. We spend more time on the internet and in front of computer screens than we do in real life. And I can go on and on with examples like these. With new technology, there will always be societal pushback. And I'm not saying these conversations aren't healthy to have. There's definitely a place for them, and I think they're necessary to some degree. You just have to decide, do you want to place your time and energy arguing about something that is ultimately inevitable and advancing at a rate faster than we've seen anything advance in human history? Or do you want to spend your time learning, embracing, and figuring out this technology and what your role will be with it in the future? And for me personally, I choose the latter.